guys, it's issue 12. Um, today we'll be uh, applying the steering crank, okay, and the chassis spacers. Now we're going to need some parts from issue 11. Okay, we've got the crank, okay, and we've got the crank collar. We've got your spacers, we've got the ball, ball head, and your 3x6mm screw. Um, if you're not too sure which one it is, it's the one with the smaller thread. Um, and just put it into the ball head and you know if it screws in then obviously you're on the right track now this is what we're aiming to be building today we're going to as I said we're going to be putting on our steering crank and we're going to be putting on our spacers okay so we'll put that one aside for now and we'll grab our blank one okay um, grab your pack of issue 12 all right and we'll open that up and we'll have a look through the book bit of Schumacher's record season Okay, champion's car, his, his points for that season, okay, um, taking in consideration that for a victory you only got 10 points instead of the 25 I believe that you get in, con in the current Formula 1, so to have 93 points. Um, was a great achievement. The Suzuka circuit, okay, we've already done Monaco and, and Hockenheim. Okay, so now we've got Suzuka, okay, and a bit here on our steering slider. So we've just put it in with issue 11. Okay, now it's showing here the knuckle arm, the steering slider, and the track rod. Okay, so it's a nice front perspective of our Red Bull RB7. Okay, and again here, just showing, you know, if your steering crank goes that way, your slider goes that way, okay, and turns the wheels, you know, and then again the opposite way. So it's a nice little setup and uh, a detailed version of how that works. Okay, now here the parts are coming issue 12. Okay, we've got our steering servo mount, which will eventually go into there to house our steering servo. Okay. And here are our instructions. Okay, so I'll open up number 12 and we'll get stuck into it. Okay, so we've opened up issue 12, right? Um, grab out those bits. Right, and just stick them aside and also grab your longer screws. As we won't be using those until the coming issues. So you just need your four smaller screws. Okay, and then as I said, the parts here from issue 11. Alright, so we'll put those parts back into there. Okay, now we'll split the spaces up. Okay, our crank, our ball and screw. Okay, and those together. Okay, now what we're going to do, we're going to work with this first. Okay, starting off by putting this on. Okay, so one thing I just forgot to mention when I was reading out the parts, you're going to also need the last 3x6mm screw to house your crank collar, okay, um, which is fairly simple. All right, just flip that over, okay, and it basically goes into that central countersunk hole here, okay. Now you want to flip it over. Now you don't really need a screw for this. You can just pretty much just screw it up by hand. Um, but if you want to go and tighten it, you can. But you don't really need to. There, it's it's on there pretty tight as it is. Okay, so we put our screw in to the underside. All right, now we're going to screw on our crank collar. Okay, as I said, you can do it by hand or you can do it up by the with the screwdriver, but it goes up pretty tight. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our steering crank. Okay, and we're going to grab our screw, right, the smallest one. Slide it through the countersunk side, and then grab our ball head. And, and just spin it on okay like, like before you can do it up with the screwdriver or you can just do it up by hand okay so it sits like that and then basically it just sits on top all right like that and it turns like so which is also with what I showed I believe either in my update or issue 11 upload okay which is exactly what I put up before. Okay, which is cool. 
Now basically what we're going to do here, alright, we're going to go in those two screw holes there, and the two at the front here, okay, um, flip it over, put them in the countersunk side, okay, now the book says you can take, um, you can take off your steering crank for this process, so we'll do that, and we'll put the screw in the countersunk hole, flip it over, okay, now you want to grab your spacers. Now these ones you only need a screwdriver for. Okay, now just get it on enough so it grips. Okay, then flip it over. Right? And hold the spacer as good best as you can. Okay. As it'll tend to slip. And just do it up until the spacers are nice and tight, nice and and nice and flush. Okay. Now rep replay, no, repeat the process for the other side. Okay, so put the screw in. Right, and then put the spacer on top of the screw. Okay, twist it just enough for it to hold it on. Okay, now hold the spacer. And then screw it in. Okay, so now we're going to do that the same with the two front ends. Okay. Brilliant. Now last one. Okay, and there we go. So flip it back over. Put your crank back on. And that is issue 12 done for the Red Bull RB7. Okay, so you can see it's really starting to come together. Okay. And uh, as you can see by the pictures, which I did mention before in the issue 12 book. Okay. So we've got our steering slider. Okay. So we've just got our knuckle arms and our track rods coming up very soon. Okay, and it's really coming together. Okay. So next week's issue, we're going to be assembling the front upper chassis, which will be cool, which I'm assuming will start from there, and go up over the top, to there, and it'll go around um, the servo. So when we get that servo, it'll sit in there nicely, and we're really starting to build the front of our RB7. Now, um, I will point out that the Australian Mark Webber RV7 seems to be a little bit more structured compared to the Sebastian Vettel um, RV7 as like they're in different orders. Um, at least here we're getting pretty much our whole front end completed. Um, where by what I can tell by the German ones it's just sort of all over the place. So like, you get your rear wheel in issue 10 and only one front wheel where we're working on the front, like it's pointless having the rear wheels uh, before you've got the, re the rear of the car and the same honestly with the Mark Webber helmet like, you know the, the shell, and what, what I can make out from that, if any of you guys have seen the uh, German uh, PDF file of the exploded uh, RB7 issue parts, which we will get in issue um, 20 uh, the the chassis or the shell of the car, sorry, the shell uh, comes in numerous parts uh, over a, a few issues. So we're getting the helmet in issue 20, but we're not going to be able to do anything with it until the later quarter of the series. So uh, I'm not too sure, but it is a little bit better structured than the German one, and I'm happy with that because you know I want to work on the whole front. And have it completed not work a little bit here a little bit there and then you know be all over the place at least here we know what we're on about and yeah guys so i've got i've got two of these going okay i'm getting my parts from the news agent each week okay to build my red bull because i'm impatient and i like my parts each week but 
my monthly subscriptions that come through um, from Diagostini give me my backup parts which I then go and complete my third Rebel RB7 and also I get the issue that's coming out the following week so that's how I was able to bring issue 11 to use you guys nice and early so hopefully that'll happen again next time around I'd just like to thank the Model Space Forum um, you guys have been a, a big success and by helping my Red Bull channel build and um, I'd like to thank all my subscribers and I hope that we can share this building experience along the way and share our knowledge so yeah guys so tune in next week for issue 13 of the Rebel RV7 build as I said we'll be doing our front upper chassis and I look forward to that and I look forward to seeing you guys then bye guys